BBC Radio Scotland. Hello, I'm Craig Hill. This is a download from the BBC. For terms and conditions, please go to www.bbc.co.uk slash Radio Scotland. Coming up this week, the friends of Giles Brandreth, the haircut of Andrew Maxwell and the dance moves of Craig Hill. Let's kick things off with everyone's friend, Giles Brandreth. As you know, I I used to be a member of Parliament and now I work for the BBC, so most of my friends have been arrested. And uh... (laughs) Answer me this. Just what is it about the academic life that attracts people to the industry? Lead academic of the project, Professor Miles Glendinning. Good morning, Miles. Hello. Uh, Is it a welcome home? You've just been on holiday. Well, I've just been on a study trip to Malta. I, I, my sincerest <laughs> apologies. I, I've, I wasn't. <laughs> Before we get contributors on to Macaulay and Co, we thoroughly check their credentials. Here's Gary Marshall. Are you well? Yeah, I kind of feel I'm here on false pretenses Why though because I, I, I lost a fight with my coffee machine this morning. Oh no! Where it was saying, "Put a thing in a thing. I'm not going to make you a coffee until you do it." And this went on for about 15 minutes of me swearing at it. Is that right? I just whacked at one and yeah, got it working. All right, Gary, <laughs> whack at one. That's his answer. It's not a surgery today, but if you've got a problem with any technology this morning, whack at one. <laughs> Gary wasn't the only contributor with a violent bent this week. Here's home ec teacher Gilda Thuglife Smith. Mm. I might just have got a wee concentrated pocket of condensed milk there. Perhaps. Well, oh, my first one. I wouldn't have thought so. Oh, you, not the way look. I. Not the, look. Not the way I beat it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> to within an inch of its life. Within an inch. <laughs> look at the forearms on Gilda. No. You've done some beating in your time, haven't you? <laughs> Only cakes. I bet things. the whisks in your drawer are knackered. <laughs> The red hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's award season, and if you're wondering who to take as your plus one, Stuart Weir has some advice. Take them to the right um, occasion. Don't mm. don't don't foist upon them someone's uh-huh. wedding or whatever it is. I mean that is you or worse, a stag <laughs> night. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Listen, come on, you must meet my pals, right? And they're all going to be together first Friday in March. Yeah. Uh, and also, um, at least uh, know the name of the uh, partner that you've actually turned up with, because oh, that, that, yes. that helps you've as well. you've forgotten. Yes, mm. especially, especially surnames. Uh-huh. Julie from The Office or, 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 or Debbie from, you know, Asda. Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe Andrew Maxwell's hair? It's probably best we just ask Andrew. <laughs> and you're a man who's had, I would imagine, pretty much the same hairstyle since I ever met you all those years ago. Yes, Fred. You have, you have a parting and the hair comes across your, your brow, mm. left to right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's uh, let's p- paint the picture for our dear listeners. Ah. Uh, I've attempted all sorts of haircuts in my time, but uh, no matter what I do, it always falls back into... It oscillates between Lego Man and Hitler. <laughs> Uh, I, I want you to know I don't hold the opinions, political of opinions of either of them. Christmas at Giles Brandreth's house must be entertaining. For her final Christmas, my son gave his granny um, an iPad for Christmas, and she was thrilled together. She was 95 years old, thrilled with his iPad. Bless her heart, she thought uh-huh. it was an electronic incontinence pad. Uh-huh. But, but nevertheless... <laughs> or a chopping board. She, she took it on board, as it were. She, uh-huh. was, she was thrilled to have it. Everybody needs good neighbours especially the Macaulay and co-listeners. You sure you want me to read this out, Colin? He's in a street full of curtain twitchers. Uh-oh. <laughs> and he <laughs> says, he sent in a thing here, uh, sometimes late at night I dig a hole in the backyard just to keep the neighbours guessing. <laughs> the other one to do is get a rolled up carpet 2am into the back of the car, go, heavier than I thought. <laughs> oh, that'll get Charlie Liggertwood, he says, my neighbour blanks me because I <clears throat> turned back her bush, which scrapes her motors. <laughs> In the wee lane. (laughs) Speaks to the rest of the family, though. Thank you very much for that. Finally, David Cameron, Madonna and Jack Straw all make an appearance in this week's news review. Brought to you by Craig Hill, Mark Nelson and Fred McCauley. I'm fun and optimistic. Okay, who said that this week? Oh, I've not heard that at all. I'm fun. It doesn't sound very fun and optimistic. (laughs) Mark, do you know who it is? I've no idea. Uh, It could be any politician. It was was the Prime Minister, David Cameron. Oh, was it? Yeah, uh, that was his pitch to win over women voters. (laughs) (laughs) Fun, fun, fun. Sounds like a Tinder profile. (laughs) (laughs) It could well be, but do you know what he likes to do in his spare time, apart from, of course, his love of cooking? He watches telly. He watches telly. Oh, mm-hmm. he's fun and optimistic. Yeah, yeah it's fun. <laughs> Last 
straw for MPs. Now, I would say Craig Hill could have got first chance at this, but he didn't offer us enough money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. We have had cash for that. Yeah. Yes, this is the... I love dodgy politicians uh, accepting cash. And two big ones as well. Yeah. Malcolm Rifton and Jack Straw. So, uh, yeah, big players getting in now. Um, you, how many times have you heard, Mark, discussing this with other people, the expression... Should have known better. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I always, I'm always confused where people are kind of tricked by fake shakes uh-huh. and Chinese firms, because if you're into that kind of thing anyway, and a guy turns up outside your house in a camel and says, "Look, how much will it be to do this?" Uh-huh. and they've got a film camera with them, you're kind of going, "Well, this might not be all it seems." So. No. I should point out, and uh, I stress this in a non-comedic way, that we, we have to mention that both Sir Malcolm Rifkind and Jack Straw deny any wrongdoing, yeah. and they have both referred themselves to the Parliament's Commissioner for Standards, and uh, he'll, he'll see them both um, sometime soon. I don't think they don't... Uh, is it they deny it, or they're just, they just don't think they've done anything wrong? I think, they, I think that is the crux of the matter. Because my, they, my... They don't think they've done anything wrong. My daughter throws cereal over my television. She doesn't <laughs> deny it, but she doesn't think she's done anything wrong. <laughs> but my think... telly's still no. knackered, so... <laughs> but is you, well, what you need is a fake television set yeah, up <laughs> purely, purely to attract the cereal. <laughs> fake Chinese television. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't you say in the interview, uh, Malcolm Rutherford, that he said, to be honest i've got lots of time i've got loads of times mm. to go walking and reading we don't really have to do very much <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I thought my goodness you, what's your new sport shooting yourself in the foot <laughs> really helping the cause i did the, 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 the video with jack straw as well where he says like five thousand pounds a day that's what i charge uh-huh. it's really it makes him sound like a call girl <laughs> yeah, it's like five thousand a pound a day. I'll do anything. <laughs> I, I, I won't. I won't kiss in the mouth though. That's not. <laughs> green around the girls. Oh, who's been a bit green around? Oh, the girls? very green around the girls. Now this is uh, the uh, the girls. This was uh, Natalie Bennett from the. Um, from the Green Party, yep. and uh, God love her, she must have woke up knackered one morning or something. I think she had a cold, she said, and uh, they asked her, but, you know, it, I was thinking at first I thought it was it was one, one of the MPs, mm-hmm. I didn't realise it was the actual leader, the leader, who might have been expecting uh-huh. a wee, you know, a, to be grilled on their policies in the morning uh-huh. on the radio. It's like when they said how much the Channel Tunnel was going to cost, you know, the guy said, yeah, it'll be, be about £12 million. B- billion, sorry, billion. <laughs> yeah, massive, <laughs> to, to get a million and a billion uh, mixed up is is inexcusable. But oh, you feel the pain, don't you? Yeah, yeah. and I think she said, "Oh, do you know what? I had a bit of a brain fade." It happens to everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you would you would identify with them a lot more if she just went. If they, rather than pausing and making it clear that she didn't know it, just go, I have no idea, honestly. I know. I was I, out honestly. last night. <laughs> I went to see The Prodigy last night. I was, it was a mad one. Stop getting pernickety about the numbers. It's not going to happen anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, numbers, schmumbers. Cold collars, get the cold shoulder. It's James getting excited about that. Yes, yeah. finally, finally. You know how everybody gets those cold calls. Um, I have to say what happens to me quite a lot is, I don't know why this happens to me, but they always phone me up and go, um, hello, I'd like to have a chat with you about kitchens. And I go, mm. all right. Uh-huh. And they go, um, is, I'm looking for Mr Hill. Is this Mrs Hill? I get that. I get that all the time, and sometimes I'm tempted to go. Uh, I'll just get, get him. him. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, how are you? Uh, but anyway, no. Um, yeah, they're 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 clamping down on. I've cold told con. you to stop taking these calls. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and then I just they put the phone down on me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's they're clamping down on uh, cold calling companies uh, by fining them up to five hundred thousand uh-huh. pounds for pestering wow. people, and you know for scaring a lot of kind of older people who are answering the phone and not sure who uh-huh. it is. So. I'm actually really glad they're clamping down on that because it's quite stressful for people when somebody you uh-huh. know calls you and pesters you. And they're quite um, persistent. Do as you well. get bothered, Mark? Uh, yeah, I do, I, what I do, I used to get uh, stuff from my wife quite a lot, and they'd say, "Can I speak to Mrs. Amy Nelson?" And uh-huh. I'd just go speaking, and then <laughs> <laughs> see how long it takes. Them to kind of, uh-huh. We also get uh, they're clamping down on texts as well. 
Yeah, that's right. more annoying, you, though. Am, am I wrong in thinking in the last year that's happened much more than it's ever happened before? Uh, I've had yeah. much more of those than I've ever had before. Because you'd be sitting there and get a text and go, we'd like to talk about the, the accident you had last year. Uh -huh. And, you go, and that's for about right. 30 seconds, you go, was that? Uh -oh. was I I did, that's <laughs> really funny, I, Mark. I've that? actually texted back and said, oh, my God, I've not even heard about this accident. Tell me what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I have actually done that. And then, do you know who... <laughs> what... say, we've got, we've got uh, CCTV footage. You spilt your pint. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, I remember that. Can I, I remember say, that. One, one that comes in and it's... Uh, we've got a new product. Have you got a minute? And I say, yeah, just hang on, and you'll see what I've done here. I get my phone the out, minute. and I give it, give them the minute. I say, right, crack on, and then eventually we get this. <laughs> I'm sorry, your time's up. I love when they... Um, and who wants a cold call? I want a hot call. Do you know, I want somebody to phone up and go, so uh, are you happy with your supplier? I think that's a different kind of call. Yeah. Well, it's Craig. much more fun. Jack Straw will do that for you, Craig. <laughs> of Oscar mania. Well, two massive award ceremonies. Well, in fact, three this week. They've, they've missed out the, the the pensions, age pension uh, mm -hmm. supplier of the year awards, which I, of course, hosted. But uh, <laughs> we've got the Oscars and the Brits. Mark, were you at either of them? Did you no, watch them on no, TV? No, uh, no. Disgracefully, I was overlooked for Best Supporting Actress this year, so uh, <laughs> I didn't make it. No, they, uh, I, didn't, I didn't watch the Oscars because it's too late on. And I watched a bit of the Brits. But uh, I didn't see the the great thing that uh -huh. happened, which was Madonna falling down the stairs. Yeah, people went mental <laughs> for it. I got texts. Yeah, about I it. don't. Old people fall down in winter all the time. It's not a. Why is this a big deal? Uh, but yeah, Less it's, of the it's, old nonsense. I know, I know, I know. It wasn't even her fault. I mean, I actually thought it was a wee stumble or something. Then I saw, oh my god, it was a good yank. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, she really fell on her bum, didn't she? Proper. Well, I was uh, on the on the way into the studio on the lift up here. There was a guy telling me that he reckons it was staged. Uh huh. Well, somebody Which else. I, it's I a risky. It's a risky stage. Yeah, I don't think it would have been, yeah. but somebody else did say that because the weird coincidence is in the song. She says, "I get up and I carry on and I stumble." Mm -hmm. ah. But I, I think that was just a coincidence. I'm sure she didn't write that song with an intention to fall at the Brits. Do you not think <laughs> the dancers would have been over to help? I mean, a couple of them just kind of. You know, stayed in their pose. <laughs> wow. and the, natural reaction the whole world was talking about the poor guy who pulled her. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, like... a risky, it's a risky dance. If you're uh -huh. wearing a long cape and all of your dancers have got antlers, I mean, uh -huh. it's a risky It's a risky <laughs> working environment anyway. It was more of a tarpaulin. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite big. It was quite big. And um, But, yeah, I, 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 I actually did um, um, get home and kind of watch that... Uh -huh. uh, Several times they go, oh God, that poor dancer. That poor I'll dancer. tell you this, uh, it's not the first time we've talked about Madonna on the programme and it's not the first time I've heard you've got to feel sorry for the poor guy that pulled her. <laughs> <laughs> we also had the... <laughs> 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 <laughs>